Hi everybody, thanks for joining us today. This is our first video in a series about designing and developing microservices in Java with a special focus on our framework called Java Micro. In today's video, I'm going to give you an overview of what it's like to get started with Java Micro and exactly what a typical service looks like. In following videos, we'll get deeper into the feature set of the framework and that will be followed up with more videos about design patterns and uh, other experiences we've had with developing a microservice ecosystem at Sixt. At Sixt, we've got a lot of engineers working on developing new services and libraries in Go and Java, and so we wanted to have some element of uniformity across the services so uh, what I'll show you first is a bot that we have on our HipChat rooms who can do tasks for us. And so what I can do is simply issue a command to him and what he's going to do is basically create the, um, the Bitbucket repository from a template and then we'll create uh, Jenkins jobs as well. So now that my repository is created, I'm going to, of course, go ahead and clone it onto my local system. And the first step I do is, uh, is typically just to go in and do a build. We use Protobuf for defining the interfaces on the uh, RPC calls for the service. And uh, so doing a build generates the, uh, the Java code from the proto files so that when we import it into IntelliJ initially, we won't have any uh, compilation problems to look at. All right, now that my project is built, I'm going to go ahead and switch to IntelliJ and open my project. Here I always use the use Gradle wrapper task configuration so that if the version of Gradle uh, changes uh, on a project, hopefully we don't run into um, strange problems uh, where the um, IntelliJ version is out of sync from the uh, command line build version which would be reflected in your uh, your normal command line builds as well as uh, Jenkins jobs. Alright, now that my project is imported we'll just poke around a little bit. Uh, as you can see the project name is correct for this example that I've created which is called FizzBuzz and what we see in general in the uh, in the file structure which is a, a Maven um, file structure is the files that were created from the template. So my first step here is going to be to uh, rename some various files into the uh, to reflect the correct project name. Uh, in this proto file I basically threw a bunch of uh, data types in there just so that uh, you'd have a quick reference as you were starting. Um, but the the first step of the designing a microservice with this framework is to define what your your uh, RPC interface is going to look like. And so what you do is uh, you can you can have multiple endpoints for your service and each endpoint basically has its own request and response definition which can include any any data type that Protobuf supports, which is essentially anything, as you have uh, raw byte access if, uh, if need be. So today we're creating a FizzBuzz service, and if you don't know what FizzBuzz is, your search engine will probably tell you very quickly. So the interface for this service is, uh, is very simple. We have uh, one input parameter, which is an integer, and we have one output parameter which is going to be a simple string. And um, again, there is a task that you can access through the Gradle menu uh, to generate the generated files from Protobuf. I find it much simpler just to switch back to my command line and run a Gradle build to generate the files. Now that I've done that, we can take a look in the build generated uh, folder to actually look at the generated Java code if we would like to do so. I forgot to rename my proto file to something more appropriate, so I will just do that real quick and regenerate the generated code again.
So the next thing we're going to take a look at is the service entry point. The framework uses class path scanning to look for services with this annotation orange microservice to know what the entry point to our service is. Here in the entry point we can do things such as verifying command line arguments, um, setting up our environment, we customize our uh, bootstrapping of our juice for, for dependency injection, we can uh, and tell the framework what our uh, RPC handlers are, and there's also hooks for um, ensuring that your environment is, uh, is set up properly before your service is, uh, is completely up and running. Now that we've defined the name of our entry point, which is required um, by the, let's call it, protocol of micro, we are going to go in and uh, set up the RPC handler with the um, properly classified um, response and, and request classes in the uh, generics. Now I'm just going to take a few seconds, uh, rename some files, move things around. We tend to take uh, a variation on the theme of uh, domain, uh, domain driven design or DDD for our services. And uh, one benefit here is that uh, if you set your service up cleanly, uh, you'll have the benefit of being able to easily create uh, integration tests where you can mock out uh, interfaces to, uh, to external components and, uh, and things like that. So using that structure, I'm going to have an application service which has uh, methods in it which are my business methods. And I basically isolate my, my protobuf and error handling to, to the RPC handler so that uh, you don't have to deal with, with protobuf, for, for instance, throughout all of your code if you don't want to. Now I'm just going in and implementing my business logic and I'm simply building up a string up to the uh, specified uh, input and we will, uh, we will out return that to the caller as the result. Next thing I'm going to do is just go ahead and do a regular build and after that completes successfully I'm using our, uh, our custom uh, Gradle plugin which has some uh, Docker plugin enabled in that and it allows us to very easily build a, a Docker image that's uh, ready to deploy uh, in local environment using Docker, Docker Compose as well as to our different uh, environments in the cloud. However, in this case, I'm not going to actually be using my Docker image or the shadow jar that I built as a side effect, but instead I'm going to show you how easy it is to run a service in your IDE, uh, simply for local testing, debugging, etc. So I'll go ahead and set up a, a runtime profile. I simply point my main class to uh, Jetty Service Base. Which is, uh, which is in the framework, and I'm going to tell it to use a fixed port of 42,000, and I'm going to set my log level at debug. 
All right, now that our service is successfully started up, we are ready to send it some requests. Uh, by default, you get uh, protobuf and uh, JSON support out of the box. So uh, we're just going to use curl to hit it today. So naturally, we are going to use uh, JSON for that. So we craft the JSON, fire it off, and within a couple of milliseconds, we have our response. That's how easy it is to use Java Micro.